Welcome, welcome everybody. Hello, we are dressed in our finest for you. <laughs> it's truly stunning. Um, great, I'm seeing all these participants roll in. Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, as people start to roll in, could you all just please, um, if, if you feel if you feel the inclination, just drop in the chat, feel free to use the chat at any point, um, where you're coming, where you're zooming in from, because I just love to know how uh, where people are tuning in from all over. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, so my name is Bahar. I use they them pronouns. Um, I am the manager of the pleasure chest in the Upper East Side. Baltimore, Costa Rica, Chicago, Costa Rica. Wow, damn, cool. Um, Welcome, welcome everyone. NYC, LA, cool. So I, uh, hello NYC, I work in New York. Um, I just had the pleasure of going to the LA Pleasure Chest for the first time. Um, we're so happy to do these Zoom classes now because we can have people from all over join. I mean, their classes were always free every week, but now we have people from Costa Rica, Missouri, um, uh, Pasadena, wow. Uh, Southern Pomo Wapo land, yes. We're on Lenape land, uh, us and the uh, Cherub and I um, in uh, New York City. Um, so welcome, we are here tonight. I'm so excited about our guest. Um, they are an amazing friend of mine and um, I'll let them introduce themselves because I just want them to, to list all the glory. <laughs> um, but tonight we are talking about soft doming. So um, this is, uh, I feel like a, this is an iteration of the kind of like, you know, the way that BDSM constantly is evolving, kink is constantly evolving, it kind of blossomed out of queer crisis. Um, it's always been a thing, but there was like the origins in the time of like when people were not really having sex in a traditional way. I mean, it's non-traditional. So I feel like those things always evolve in the way that queers and people do, um, sex does. Um, queer, kink has always been around, but I feel like queer culture has definitely shaped it and cultivated it. Cultivated it. Um, so tonight, I just wanna give everyone a heads up. Thank you for all joining. If you stay for the whole class, stay tuned because at the very end, we are gonna give a little discount code. So if you stay the whole time, if you're very good, you will stay, sit and stay, and you will know what the discount code is. And that gives you 15% off everything on our website, pleasurechest.com. So stay for the code. Also be extra good and listen to everything very carefully because what I like to do is quiz all of you at the very end. Think of it as a little game that we're playing inside our soft doming class. Um, listen very carefully because there will be a little quiz at the end and whoever answers correctly in the chat, the first person to answer correctly will win a prize. And the prize is really good. It's three things. You're getting a prize pack. Um, so uh, it is a flogger a set of cuffs and a, a spandex hood. So kind of like a start get started kit, I think. So listen very carefully, we have the prize at the end. The other thing I should mention is that make sure you're following us on Instagram. I'm sure you heard about this through Instagram. So um, follow us on Instagram. There's a giveaway this week too. This is the last week of our celebration of our 50th anniversary. Um, so uh, yeah, we've been around for 50 years it's kind of a feat so we're we've been doing giveaways all month also every in-store purchase um is being donated uh 15 of it is being donated to gay for good um that's also still going on um so yeah uh just stay tuned look at our insta if you want to win prizes if you want discount codes just keep it all in mind okay so all of that aside um, yeah, uh, I just want to establish that if you have any questions, we are covering a lot and we're going to be kind of chatty, you know, this is just kind of a casual chat, but if you have any questions at all, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, if we don't see them, you know, uh, someone will, the voice behind the curtain will sort of alert us to answer any questions as we go. We might want to save them till the end, but if they go with the flow of the conversation, I feel okay to answer them in the moment. If that's okay with you, Gradex Cherub. Yes, that sounds great. 
Beautiful. Okay, so without further ado, um, I would like to introduce my guest, Godex Cherub, Soft Dom, located in New York. Go ahead, take it away. Tell us about you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Godex Cherub, and I am a non binary soft dom curator, performance artist extraordinaire. Um, and I, yeah, just, I'm happy to be here. Um, I have previously uh, worked with uh, Fatal Co, Stigma Unbound, and Kink Out. Uh, those are some artist collectives uh, for folks in the field. Um, so perhaps if you know of any of them, I may seem familiar. Um, thank you to our, our, our fancy tech wizards that are dropping um, all of my socials and um, please follow. Right in, in the chat. So please follow, uh, reach out, um, especially after today, if there's anything that tickles your fancy, if there's anything you're more curious about, um, if you are a fellow provider and you'd like to collaborate, if you're a photographer, you know, run the gamut. Um, don't hesitate. And yeah, I'm very excited to have this conversation with Bahar, good friend of mine, and we will cover uh, a lot. And I'm, yeah, really excited to dive in. Thanks for having me. Yay, cool. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so you're a dom, you're a soft dom. Let's just define it. Um, and with that, with that being said too, this is, uh, you know, defining things in kink, like putting limits on things are, what I'd like to say, fluid. They're fluid limits, if we want to say. So I, you know, usually when I see kink, any sort of sort of kink um, workshops, I get a little nervous and people are like, this is what tops do and this is what bottoms do and this is what doming is and blah, blah, blah. Just with the caveat that everything's always changing and soft dom is actually kind of just a way of your style, if I'm not mistaken, right? What would you say that soft doming is and what isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I think um, soft doming, it is really, I'm really excited by the idea of softness. And I relate that to my gender, I relate that to aesthetics. And so with, with soft doming, with that kind of domination, it really can range from you your what you, the approach of the dom is what the style or format is what aesthetics and styles are used um what and it can permeate through language behavior uh decorum mm -hmm. and how the dom or the top may carry themselves or what the dynamic will be right. and so i think is in for some people it's just a little splice and it and it may not look that different um from other styles of domination and bdsm uh but for me i find that um oh, we're frozen uh oh x are you still there Oh no. Hello. Are you still there? I'm, I'm back. Great. Okay. You said for me, I find that. Um, because for me, let's see if I remember where I left off of the sentence. Um, I find that some interesting kind of pieces of soft doming can include play with uh, tenderness, patience, education, abolition, um, sociology. And that's where I really am into like queering domination, queering what that, what that DS dynamic is. Yeah, yeah. And kind of, I, I think, um, and, and the reason, you know, we were throwing around this word in, 
in some promotional materials holistic um, is that we're really also thinking about wellness and the well-being of, of both the provider and the submissive. Yes. And I think there, there may be maybe some aspects that folks really only explore in their aftercare, but right. really thinking about, well, what if that kind of mentality was there the whole time? Now, it doesn't mean someone's not going to, you know, get, get a bunch of, you know, marks on their, on their buttocks or end up with a bunch of bruises or that they're not going to, and, you know, be humiliated or punished. Right. Cause it, cause I feel like, it doesn't mean that you're not going to explore limits. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and in terms of holistic too, I feel like when we talk about the mainstream idea of what BDSM is, everyone has this very specific image because of media, because of Fifty Shades of Grey, because of like, you know, this idea of like, there's a top and a bottom and the power is always in this way. And usually we don't think about the top's emotional state as much as the bottom's emotional state. And we don't think about, um, like when we say holistic, I think I'm also saying like drawing from more, I, I want to be snarky and say more creative <laughs> um, ideas of how power can be shifted and how power can be actually shared. Um, it's not black and white all the time. And I think softness, the idea of softness plays with that. Um, like the idea of service, the concept of service can be shame can be harsh, but it also can be super tender. Um, and I think that's like a, a big part of it as well, right? Yes, definitely. And I love that you use the word creative because I think, you know, they're like, it's play at the end of the day, right? Like they're like, and sometimes you forget the play and um, I'm really interested in also like, okay, well, when, what maybe, isn't the way I want to approach things. Um, maybe there's a, a spin on 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 something, whether it's using a certain implement or tool or technique, um, and then thinking about well, yeah, yes, yes, current, current yes, current domination, um, yes. Yeah, sure. hearing power, like having power, power and making like that queer. And and I feel like for folks who are sort of confused by the term queering, like queering is, I feel like has has also been tossed around in this way. It doesn't, I don't, some people think that it means to gayify, <laughs> which totally like I'm here for it. Um, <laughs> but I think what we're saying is just like, we're talking about creativity. We're talking about outside of what we have been fed. We're talking about abolition. We're talking about um, uh, subverting. We're talking about like breaking the expectations because now, now even kink, which is supposed to be this anomaly has, has now has these expectations. Um, and a lot of people are wondering if they're doing it right. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think if someone once asked me um, just to go on this idea of like queer and queer and using that term. Um, Sometimes one time someone had asked me, you know, well, how would you define queer or what does queer mean? And I was thinking about it, you know, well, outside of of personal identity, it is really kind of like the anti, um, the anti what is normative, what is, what is mainstream, or yeah. what is, what is kind of fed to the public in this mass, in this mass way. And I feel, and I mean, I saw like on a Halloween store site, there was like, be a dom for Halloween. And it right had kind of all of these <laughs> characters and and toys on there. Yeah. And it's 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 something where I I also am like kind of concerned too, because there is so much that um, you know, in addition to trust and safety, um, there is a lot um 
involved in in this world that I am like depending on what people's entry points are right. you know they may not have like all the information they need to go down a rabbit hole but perhaps you know if there if there is you know this approach that is open to constantly learning, open to, to like subverting dynamics, right. to like who is servicing who, right. who is serving who, who is offering, right. like what are the offerings that are being exchanged and even thinking about the bare bones of, well, what am I getting out of this? Why do I want to engage with this? And perhaps even think about, you know, personal goals, wants, desires, um, healing work and how that aligns with what kind of practice or play you yeah. want to get. It's very introspective work, actually. It's not just donning on latex and beating the crap out of someone. It's like super, into, I mean, <laughs> well, that's kind of fun. Um, but it is like a deep search because when we talk about softness, holistic creativity, there's a lot of questions you have to answer alone. You can't find those answers in a scene with someone else. Like, like the the scene is the is the iteration or the sort of like symptom of the the discovery. I guess symptom is weird. It's a weird term, but uh, yeah, I feel like the, those moments are where you can kind of say, like, when you were saying um, being creative is like, what do I want to to see what do I want to give the, and the reason why kink is separate from abuse is, is consent. There is this idea of consent and consent is not permission. So the, I, this idea of like asking yourself what you want and how you can ask somebody for that and how you ask it can create that dynamic. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we're talking about. We're, we're, um, if anyone is interested, the wheel of consent is this amazing tool where, I, well, I'll, if you want to boil it down, Cherub, after uh, basically what I see it as is like wherever it lands, uh, if you want to look it up, I think that we can send a link or something if you look the wheel of consent up, you are essentially just finding out what, who benefits, who ultimately is benefiting from the action. And that's where you can figure out where the power dynamic lays. Because once you're within the wheel of consent, it's consensual, um, you can find out like where the desire is rooted and who it's for and play with that or give it to someone or take it or serve it or accept it or whatever. So yeah. Um, I want you to talk about the will of consent because I feel like you have some ideas, but I also want folks in the chat. Um, thank you all. I love that you all know the will of consent. That's great. Um, if you all uh, are, are um, into kink, uh, I just want to know everyone's level of experience. Like who here has been doing scenes their whole life? They're kinksters, they go to munches, they're like, they're, they're all already there and who's totally new to it. I just want to get a gauge of like what people are here for and what people are interested in. Please feel free to drop it in the chat or if you have any questions as we go. Um, so yeah. Oh, yay, newbies, beautiful. <gasps> amazing, amazing. Yeah, then please, if you have any questions, we love them. Oh, so many newbies, great. I'm glad to see it. Welcome, welcome so much, welcome. welcome. Um, yeah, so. X, what, how does consent play into soft domination for you or the wheel of consent? Yeah, I think it's really interesting to think about this, this take and give, serving, um, allowing, ex serving, accepting, taking, allowing, and kind of also these areas where they kind of get get muddled in a in a in a good way with being like oh well this is like this is for this other person but right. i'm enjoying it right like you know finding that and i think that's what's really exciting um you know like as a provider like using the tool uh the wheel of consent is really exciting to think about you know like 
um, the dynamics, you know, between like even thinking about how there's a service, there can be a service sub, there could be service top. Top, totally. And right. that's the most interesting, I think, like power uh, exchange, or I think it's the most clear um, example of like, oh, you see how you can give power by servicing someone, but you can also mm -hmm. using like taking care of someone as mm -hmm. a, like, like mommy's daddies. We have, we all know that concept, like daddies, you know, <laughs> daddies. And I daddies. think even the, even the term, you know, and yet, yet this is, this is used, you know, both, you know, for professional reasons and censorship reasons, but even the, even the term provider, you know, and that Dom's use, Dom's in, and those in the field using that word, um, especially in a, in a professional setting, it's really yeah. interesting to think about when you think about, well, yeah, who is my, yeah, so like similar to like a doctor, a doctor, a therapist, mm -hmm. an acupuncturist would be a provider. Uh, Frank Ocean has a great song called Provider. Yeah. <laughs> so thinking about, you know, one who, you know, it's, it's, you know, yes, you can think about one who provides, one who is offering, one who is helping to guide the mm -hmm. other. And I, I really like the, the aspect of thinking that, you know, I'm kind of, <laughs> guiding you on this journey and we're on it together and you're trusting me trusting me with my knowledge experience and that I will also be having this communication with you before during and after our play together that really you know builds this relationship builds this dynamic and I think you know when we think about providers and other aspects of our lives maybe we hate going to the doctor well but we don't necessarily hate going to our dom um and <laughs> there is something to think about you know well like that the role the role of of servicing and i am really i i really enjoy like thinking of of pro, of being a provider as offering uh, a service, but I also have submissives that will engage in service and in task, you know, for me as well. So thinking about, you know, that uh, referencing back, trying to trying to make sure things are a little clarified for for new folks, you know, the you know idea of like service, serving, pleasuring, offering, offering up um a service or tool or oneself um and that can and that can be um from the top or bottom from the dom from the sub perspective um both I, like can for go example like, like if we want to give an example do you have one or do you should i you you can go for it like an example of service, uh, like offering someone a foot massage. If we're if we're also bringing it back to the wheel of consent too, it's like offering someone a foot massage because they are tired. They asked for one. They you know you know that they love foot massages. There's this example of like okay, so you're giving, you're offering this, and you're offering your time, and you're offering your hands, your labor. Then if we uh, think about it in terms of like you as the one who's giving the foot massage, you're still doing it, but say you have a foot fetish. The touching someone's feet gives you extreme pleasure. So now it's shifted because the one who's benefiting, even, I mean, even if the person still enjoys the foot massage, it's not like they have to not enjoy it. That's different. That's outside of consent. We're talking about within consent now you're benefiting because you get to touch someone's feet and it comes from a different energy so thinking about it in terms of that where that comes from and the service being shifted even though it's still serving um but but you mentioned uh, your submissives and things that you tasks and things that you do um i wanted to get into that a little bit because for for newbies i think a lot of people don't really know how scenes even come to be so uh first before we talk about that what is your what do you think is your most What's your favorite thing about topping, soft doming? 
Oh, my favorite is, I mean, other than having the, having power and mm -hmm. control and, and the trust someone has in me to kind of curate this experience yeah. right. for them. I mean, I mean, I love the idea of thinking about it as curating yes um and because that kind of ties it to the creativity you yeah. know setting setting the the mood you know the the atmosphere and especially if you're and to throw in like um another juicy juicy turn thinking about erotic blueprints and those those folks who yes we're working in in kink but there are folks who are more sensual or energetic types and even if you're not familiar with erotic blueprints just thinking about what those words mean and those approaches yeah. if anyone's um, interested I, and likes taking little quizzes it's fun you don't have to adhere to it at all if you're not interested in something like that but if you um uh take this little quiz you can find your erotic blueprint which essentially is like what type of how does your arousal start? Where does your arousal start? And there's like five different types and you can you can be a combination of a few or you can be a little bit of all of them, but there are a couple types. So if you're interested to look up erotic blueprints, but yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, for a scene you can have as little or as much information as you would like. Um, and depending on what existing relationship you may have, with the other person or persons that you are playing with, um, that can definitely inform um, what you choose this scene to be. I think definitely thinking about, well, what are my wants, needs, and desires? Okay, what is, what are, if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, what is the other person's wants, needs, and desires? So making sure that we're also like playing within like interests. And, you know, I always think, you know, when someone, when a submissive is like, oh, I want this or I want that. Um, I always think, well, what am, what am I going to get out of it? Right. You know, am I, am I, and thinking like, oh, is this going to, or am I going to enjoy in, in the impact, enjoy hitting them with my flogger, am I going to, oh, I definitely, I definitely would. Um, but thinking about, um, there are, right, there's sadomasochism, there's, you know, being a sadist, masochist, being a little bit of, of both, receiving, giving receiving pain. pain. Inflicting pain. Mm -hmm. There's, but there's also so much more. So um, much more, I, a lot so of much is not involved. <laughs> pain I feel like a, a lot of people think it's always hitting someone or stabbing someone or pinching someone it doesn't it really doesn't have to be it can be um and then I feel like there's so many examples of also things we do every day in life that involve sort of like exploring limits that have nothing to do with pain and can be turned mm. into a game a fun sexy game <laughs> yeah there is you know even thinking about tease and denial um, and edging and chastity. Um, those are definitely fun ones. And then I have even thought about, you know, what are things that probably people don't even think about as like typical BDSM? Like I sign my submissives readings and like give them uh, assignments homework assignments that are anything from administrative work to research to write essays. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, and I think what's really, what's really great. Do you and, grade um, your submissives? Yes. Wow. You know, I were also, I also have like submissives that like love, you know, there's, and I totally get this, you know, loving like praise and like being told like good job good boy like you know um and that can come from so much and i find that you know giving when i give tasks different tasks even if they're physical tasks like cleaning um to a submissive what's great to hear is that that they're doing it and they because they want to impress and they want to please and they don't want to disappoint and that is is really exciting for me but also thinking about um a word that was used recently 
by a submissive of mine was encouragement that there is like this encouragement to like be like hold yourself accountable i'm going to give you this task yeah. you're going to do it and you're going to do it well and if you don't hmm, hmm. then well then so what hmm. does that look like i'm curious about the hmm in terms of this uh holistic creative softness like you're saying tease and denial is there punishment involved how does the conversation about uh, the task that you come up with and the boundaries. How did that, how does that conversation go for you? Like before the scene is made or punishment. punishment. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, and that, that's what's, what's also like really funny is to think, okay, about punishment and, you know, punishment isn't always hitting someone, causing someone pain. And if someone likes pain, then you might, you might rethink yeah. giving them what they want if right. what they want is pain. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think uh, you brought up boundaries and, and boundaries, boundaries, boundaries are so important before you do anything, even if you're never going to watch any other workshop conversation or do any other research <laughs> into DSM, these, like know the boundaries of the people you are playing with yeah. and to make sure they know your boundaries, physical, emotional. I would even check in like each time you're together always during um, too. during you know how does this feel how, you know how, like and trying to really gauge you know comfort safety and trust in a way so that way you can get that get that squared away so that you can have room for the fun because we don't want things to get south turn south and right. then there there isn't isn't fun you can also have a fun way of exploring talking about boundaries yeah. you can do, do something that, that what confuses you know a lot of people uh how to check in without taking them out like this is part of the creativity and the holistic thing too is like come up with ways to check in that are still within the dynamic of your scene. Um, like there, I had a sub once where we would, instead of being like, are you good? Like we would, you know, which sub could take you out. I would say happy boy or sad boy. I would be, and that was our sort of gauge, like happy, sad. And then we can kind of say like, okay, if there, it was sad boy, we would check in a little deeper. If it was happy boy, I would keep doing what I was doing. So yeah. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, happy boy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, and the way that you come up with the scene, we talked about you asked your design, you asked about what you want in the moment and whatever. Um, what do you think? I mean, obviously I can't ask you because it's not you, but what, if you were to say like, what is your sub's perspective um, from your point of view? Like during a scene, after a scene, like, you said the word encouragement. Is there anything else that really like is, uh, do you get ideas for scenes from them mainly? Do they, do they request them? Do you come up with things because you just know that they like this type of play? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so sometimes, I mean, depending on, right, if this is lifestyle or professional. Um, and what's, uh, if you could define the difference between that. Yeah, so lifestyle for those of you having fun with personal partners, no one's getting paid. Um, lifestyle uh, is that's a, a very sim sim simplified way of of saying that. Thinking about um, the dominant and submissive dynamic, um, because there are folks who just enjoy kink. Um, and fetish in BDSM as a whole in their personal life and their sex life, spicing things up on the regular or irregularly. And then there are people who this is their their work, their job. They're you know they're uh, sex workers, providers. providers. <laughs> um, and so then that would be you know the pro professional realm. Um, so of course there's so depending on whether this is like a personal lifestyle submissive partner or uh, or professional depends on that changes like okay what is the how approach the of like even even how the conversation starts mm -hmm. 
you know, and um, with lifestyle, you're kind of le- it, a little bit more into my personal world. And then in, in, for professional, you're, it's like this, this cure, this curated, this curated life that you're seeing. Um, but I think I, I always have ideas <laughs> and I always, and so like on my website, I list like books. And if anyone ever wanted to impress me, they would read these books. They would synthesize them and write essays for me without me even asking. Um, what's the, you know, there are, it, I think it really goes either way with either a submissive making a request. And I would say there's also fine line between that depends on what mood I'm in. I may say you're not in, you're not in the position to make requests. Right. right. Um, you know, that's just part of dynamic and, 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 and play, but if someone, but really just starting from, if someone has an immediate desire or, uh, or craving, or, you know what I haven't done in a long time, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, and really thinking from there, or, or maybe you see something, you know, on TV, or maybe you heard of something or, um, you know, you eavesdropped it in, into a conversation and you got an idea that way. Yeah, um, so inspiration I think that, is all around, like you take inspiration from everywhere. Um, that's how we create, cultivate most of our desires is by seeing it and taking in our surroundings. So yeah, totally. I see that. We did have a question. Um, someone asked, uh, Grace asks, does a person have to practice domination professionally to be considered a provider? Mm-hmm. I think that in the context, yeah, if you want to answer. Um, I would say um, usually that term is used uh, specifically for professionals um, in indicating that. However, I think it's so I would be just be mindful of of using the word and when you use it, um, so that no one gets confused and like offers you money, um, and you know there isn't like this like solicitation happening that um, isn't warranted. Um, I but I think I I love the idea of like even thinking about personal dynamics, and you know because like you can like. I mean, I love, you know, you know, being called majesty, professor, boss, you know, so thinking about, you know, provider language, um, I think can be really fun to play with. Yeah, I would just, it would just depend on, I would say, um, context when you're using the word, um, just to, because if you were to like, um, post if you were to advertise and, with, with the word advertise. provider, if you're on a dating app and you use the word provider, it could imply that you are asking for uh, money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is fraught uh, right now. So, <laughs> but here at the Pleasure Chest, sex work is work and we are fighting every day to decriminalize um, and uncensor and make this work uh, known because people crave it. So um, it is, completely normal to create this type of work and look for a provider. Um, and they're out there. <laughs> Hence, we have one here with us today. Um, so uh, oh, we have also someone who wants to impress you, it looks like. Where do we find your book list on your website? So hmm, very interesting. Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, if you want to answer that, Cherub, I will continue here. Sure. Oh, perfect. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That's Amazing. In the chat. Look and at all the, like, all the uh, strings that work it. for you, God X. <laughs> uh, did, I loved that. Just like magic. Yeah. And I'm, and I have, and those, I mean, I probably only have, you know, um, probably less than a dozen books listed there. So, you know, can check it periodically. You can also, there are also other books I, you know, I didn't list there that would, you know, still impress me. Even if you're not looking to be my submissive, they're really great books. Um, really, um, um, on the, t- you know, I'm really interested in critical theory, abolition, um, thinking about queerness and trans identity, um, and kind of thinking about a, you know, future, a future that is inclusive of queer folk, 
disabled folk, marginalized folk, uh, sovereignty, land back, all that, all that juicy stuff. And that, and I've in, and I, in, I put that reading list on my site because we you know when I'm working with submissives and a lot of the times they are cis white men, uh, cisgender uh, white men, um, you know, they have so much privilege and a lot of ignorance just because the, uh, of their privilege and just how they grow up. And so I find that I, I am really interested in dynamics where, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting something, something back because they're, you know, serving me in some way, worshiping me, whatever it may be or completing tasks, but not, and I'm also, I'm also like educating, educating you and guiding you on the journey to becoming a better person. You're so leading you're a not, horse to water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also trying to teach a man to fish, you know, like, exactly right. you know, um, and, you know, and, and I, you know, there, I have, I feel like, I don't know, I just want the world to be <laughs> a better place. Yeah. Um, and so I really firmly believe in one-on-one -on -one dynamics, um, do, like doing that and yeah. having an impact on an individual and how that ripples out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's such a like delicious example of what we're talking about when we talk about soft doming, where it's mm -hmm. like, you are giving them this knowledge that is vital for them to go out into the world and see us all as interconnected mm -hmm. people. Like you, you know what I mean? It's like, you wanna be my sub, let me teach you a thing or two about how to just be, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, so it looks like we have another question here. Um, is there an email we can contact for webinar feedback? Um, yeah, totally. I think that um, Ruth or, uh, uh, I, I mean, I would love feedback if you just wanna DM me at Peach Fuzz Co-op, but also yeah, community at pleasurechest.com would be great. We would love feedback. And then um, the other question was, can you suggest some strategies or framing that could help with feeling more confident in soft doming? I feel a lot of pressure to deliver a very aggressive feminine and sadistic type of dom which is something that i sometimes like and uh but the rest of the time feels wrong for me this is a great question thank you so much for asking that yeah and i i think for me i also like at violence and even in even in the realm of play and consent like for me, violence and aggression can be triggering to even take that on for myself. Um, and I'm like, oh, I know this is like play, um, but you know, if you're not having fun, then it's not fun. And I think it's really important, I think for me in kind of cultivating and figuring out like being a soft dom for me has really been, oh, because I don't necessarily see myself as this super sadistic um dom that's just like you know mean girl on the block or something like that um that's just you know ruthless disciplinarian you know punishment humiliation and and even shame i feel like sometimes there can be um especially with things like sissification feminization and that kind of thin line um, forced to buy. There's certain things that I personally don't do um, because they are um, kind of can be inherently transphobic, homophobic, um, and just make me uncomfortable. And even though I have like this twist on needle play that involves tattooing, because I just really love uh, tattooing and having someone who um, enjoys being a needle bottom um, work great, with me yeah. in that way to be like branded is, is something. But for me, it's like not necessarily about the pain. It's about the intimacy. Yeah. 
Um, it's about the, in the, the intimacy and the trust there. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's so much to explore and there are all kinds of toys you can use, you know, with scent, like sensory deprivation or sensory play. Um, there are different aspects of kink, fetish and BDSM that do not involve physical pain and I yeah. think yeah and they're they're definitely I have an out anecdote there. If, if um if uh I can share I have an anecdote about a sub I had once where um we would play uh uh this game where they weren't hydrated enough they were always talking about how they didn't drink enough water so I would um yeah actually uh Cherub and I have matching cats so uh <laughs> Um, they love joining on the webinars. Um, so they didn't drink enough water. So my, uh, uh, I would send them reminders. I would tell them to put an alert on their phone every hour to drink a glass of water. And uh, the ulti ultimately, they when they came home, I was like, and I'm, I need you to pee, and I have to see what color. And if it's not clear, then you get a punishment. Punishment. It was like our little game. So that is an example of no violence, no, you know, I was in my house wearing sweatpants. Like I, there was no, you know what I mean? And that's also because of the magic of phones and, and you know, we can set tasks. Like the, the framework that you're maybe asking for is just coming up with a task that has some sort of result at the end. Um, can be totally one of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tattoo is I think, such a cool idea, Cherub. I love that as sort of like, yeah. it's needle play technically. <laughs> right, right, right. And I feel like, you know, and that's just like one like creative outlet for me and just a fun way. Um, and, you know, some people don't like blood or, and, and sometimes that's a little too much, but they love, but there are people who are covered in tattoos right. um, that may still feel that way or people who don't have any tattoos. Mm -hmm. It's also possible, um, to like tattoo without ink and just get that sensation. Right. Um, though I really love the idea of branding people. Yeah. What about, um, you were talking about chastity, which also is a great, yeah, uh, framework. Um, I see that you're wearing some keys right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Happy Locktober. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, chastity has been really, really fun and exciting. Um, setting as um, and with chastity, you can do it without a penis cage, but with a cage is a lot, a lot more fun. Um, and you can even do that remotely, um, right? Setting like a schedule. Mm -hmm. for the submissive and saying, okay, we're going to work our way up to the goal. This is what your goal is. And I want to help you to get to this goal and, and saying, you know, this is when, this is when you're allowed to touch yourself. This is when you're allowed to orgasm. This is when you can't, mm -hmm. this is how many, this, this is what you like, don't take off this cage un unless I tell you to. Right. And so, um, there are so many fun ways to play with power and control um, and kind of like this surrender. Totally. And I, I really love, you and know, there's for those who are not really familiar, uh, just, just to give a little, a cock cage, a, a, you know, chastity cage, we sell them. They are either come in metal or plastic, but we sell more plastic kinds. They vary in range of like very easy to get out, out of all the way to locked. Um, uh, thank you for the 10 minute warning. Um, and uh, there's actually even ones where um, you can lock it with a serial number. It's like a plastic tag. And then if they need to get out of it, they'll cut it. But your Dom can keep track of how many times they've cut it off. They can have the number in their book and they can keep track. So you can actually see, oh, the serial number doesn't match the one I have here. So you obviously cut it off. So, you know, I mean, playing with that sort of thing too and have wearing it in public, no one knows um, that they're wearing it and having the key on your neck is very telling, you know, it's like a thing. So these are all ways of, of playing with power and not having any sort of violence or, yeah. Um, so thank you for the 10 minutes. Um, before we go, um, if you want to give a quick 
I just I'm, want, I want you to answer this so badly. What do you see, you, you mentioned already BDSM expanding to in the future, like as we talk about evolution, yeah, what is your idea for uh, the future of BDSM? I mean, I'm already kind of seeing it, even with, um, you know, seeing like pink latex and even <laughs> seeing you know, wear and ruffles um, and um, seeing just different doms, like even in aesthetic, mm -hmm. bring a different look with a color palette, right? Doesn't always have to be black. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't always have to be black and red We're or against the grain today. <laughs> 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 but you know but also like I've got like this like you know rouge on my face that's mm -hmm. a little bit more playful or youthful mm -hmm. um, I think I I really really hope there is like a more carving out space you know especially because BDSM is like and kink is very much a part of queer culture I want to kind of see some like taking back, stepping up and forward and more queer and trans narratives um, and providers um, who are, you know, exploring and, and, and revolutionizing things. I, I want to see more creativity and more like, and, you know, whether it's, you know, photo shoot or an actual scene happening, um, or in, in film and TV, just, you know, what are ways we can think about power dynamics and kink in ways that kind of push, push this, this, what has kind of become a tighter and tighter and tighter box where yeah. we think about, you know, expand what are ways we can yeah expand and 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 queering and and really queering it and I think that's really going to come from queer and trans folks um because you know us using our experiences to kind of cater well what do we value what do we value in a person or in relationships right and and in dynamics and and yeah. in thinking and just having like a different approach and a different and a different want it's you know more than just being like i hate men i just want to beat up men and have them suffer yeah. um it's i flat. think it falls flat yeah it's flat so multi 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 multi-dimensional right. multi-dimensional holistic thinking about the whole person mm -hmm. even like as they exist like outside of a session outside of a scene and how they take the scene with them yeah totally um amazing uh, yes so um uh i wanted to also just show off for some of the newbies um there are really basic things you can use around the house to do kinky stuff that has nothing to do with pain or impact um but if you are interested a really great place to stop to start is a blindfold this is one of my favorites because silicone you can clean it um blindfolds take away so much of the meaning making people are always trying to figure out what they're seeing so start with a blindfold honestly if you start with a blindfold you will be less nervous about what's going on because you can kind of do things without being worried about what the you know it's it takes the pressure off of you and it also keeps piques everyone's interests all every other all the other senses are heightened um you can use things like ticklers and little you know this is not going to hurt anybody ever but with a blindfold on, everything's uh, expanded. So start with a blindfold, start with a little tickler, things like that. Um, thank you so much all for staying this long. We have about five minutes left. I am going to now ask our quiz question for all of you uh, who have been here the whole time. Um, uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, let me pop in the question so we, that we don't forget um, to do the giveaway, which is a flogger that looks very much like this, but a bit smaller. It's a leather flogger from Detail, the handmade. And we have a cup set and we have a spandex hood. All three are being given away. So everyone get ready, drum roll. Our quiz question, whoever answers first wins all those, is what is the alternative or twist that Godex Cherub uses on for needle play. 
<laughs> Very good. Let's see. The first person was Jade Angel. Is that what y'all see? Jade Angel. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Jade is our winner. Congratulations. Woo! Congrats, Jade. Wow, you all were so good. Happy boys. <laughs> you all did such a good job paying attention so closely. Very good. Would you agree, God X? <laughs> yes. So, so good. So good. Um, congratulations, Jade. Uh, yeah, send your email to Ruth and we'll send that to you right away. Um, and then for all of you who did not win, but still are looking to get some things like maybe a, a little tickler or even some rope, we have really great soft cotton rope. This is Japanese bondage rope, great for beginners. Um, we have a 15% off um, code for this class. The code is DOMME, D-O-M-M-E, DOMME. And that'll give you 15% off any purchase uh, for the next 48 hours on our website. Um, thank you both so much. Um, we have about three minutes. I did really like that um, last question if you wanna answer, uh, I think it was, could you remind us what, how people take the scene with them means? Mm. I think we, I think we were touching on the holistic aspect of like the scene is uh, uh, closed. It's uh, you know encapsulated in the scene. And for those of you who don't know, we should probably should have defined scene is literally the act that you're building together, whether it's sexual, whether it involves sex or not, if it's impact involves pain or not. Um, like for example, my water domination reminder thing is technically like a scene, um, even though it's the whole day. It's encapsulated, but after that, the experience still lives inside the body. So that's kind of what I meant. Um, uh, if you want to expand on that, Cherub. Yeah, I mean, even just thinking about how like healing and cathartic a scene can possibly be, or if you learn something, learn something about yourself or like genuine like education that you just did not know before. So thinking about, you know, how you can really see like, okay, everyone, like we went to, you know, if you went to school, like, okay, what did you learn in school today? Right. Like thinking about, you know, what are you gonna, or like, what's one thing you're gonna take with you? What, you know, and I think it's really great to whether you journal on that fact or just ruminate on it. Um, you know, the best, the best dynamics and the best scenes are ones that, you know, leave uh, a mark, um, even if that's just internal. <laughs> Um, does aftercare take place for soft doming the way it does for more aggressive play? Ooh, I think aftercare, it's kind of like before, during, and aftercare, there's care. Before kind of care, like the during whole, care. <laughs> the whole time, um, kind of always checking in. So there isn't necessarily, I mean, there can be, of course, you know, if you want it to be more aggressive and have, you know, less check-ins or more check-ins, but you can kind of, like we said before, have a twist on how you check in. So you're still like in the scene, in the moment. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, so with, with soft domination, you would still do aftercare, but I think um, there is- I think like what you were saying, like, yeah. what did you take away? Like discussing what yeah. are you, you know, right. like aftercare is kind of talking about like, Oh, uh, even even like, how are you gonna go about the rest of your day after the scene, your night, your week, or, or even what about our next scene? Does this change how our next scene is going to be? You know, having that conversation after can be part of aftercare. For sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing, it is nine. Thank you all so, so much. If you have any more questions, please feel free to DM me. I'm Peach Fuzz Co-op, C-O-O-P. And um, God X, if you want to put your, uh, I mean, we put your socials in there. Thank you so, so much. Thanks all. Yay, you were the best guest. Oh my God, thanks. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. Yes, please hit up all of us if you have any questions. Thanks again. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks Bye. all. Thank you all. Thanks so, so much. <laughs>